Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're gonna to be talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and the beauty of mathematics behind it. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel in the description below. So what we're gonna talk about is the logarithmic regression of Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market cap. And we're gonna be looking at the mathematics that's kind of hidden there. And I've talked about it some on the channel before, but I want to unwrap this for you guys even further. Now, you can find you can find mathematics in in nature all the time. I mean, you just look around you. There's there's math everywhere. It's just it seems to be part of nature. If you look around, you know, you'll find Fibonacci spirals in pine cones and plants. You'll find hexagons in beehives. In addition, you'll find fractals in ferns, just like you'll find fractals you know, in, in your brain and the neuron, the neurons in your brain. And then you'll find concentric circles in trees. You know, these are, these are things that you just, you see around you. And there's, there's math everywhere involved in this. You know, I started off in my career really being fascinated by space and I still am. And there's even fractals there. I mean, there's a, there's a Fibonacci spiral that makes up our, our Milky Way galaxy. Um, you know, planets, they don't orbit in exactly concentric circles. Obviously, the orbits are elliptical, elliptical. but these things are, these things are just fascinating that, that math tends to show up in, in places where you would least expect them. So in the cryptocurrency regression line, this is our, uh, you know, this is our fair valuation fit to the cryptocurrency market cap. And I've updated it to be July 2nd, so it's updated through today. The current market cap of all cryptocurrencies is around 261 billion. Our fair value trend line says that our fair value is at 442 billion. According to this, we're undervalued right now by 41%. Okay? Is this is this, you know, is this something that's new? No, it's not. We've been in this situation before. We were in it during the first cycle, we were in it during the second cycle, you know, years of undervaluation. And now we're, you know, we're in it in our third cycle. Now, if you draw a line from the peak to the fair valuation line, so just draw that line from the peak to the fair valuation. You draw it for the first cycle and the second and a projected one for the third. You can see the time to get to our fair valuation is getting longer. And this is where, you know, this is the, the, the you know, this is where a lot of the, the lengthening cycle theory comes into play. Now, if you draw from peak to peak and peak to peak and peak to peak again, you get the idea. You can see that we are seeing diminishing returns over time. I've made them, you know, solid lines so that you could you could more easily distinguish between them. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to extend these. Um, but before I do, if you if you take a look at where the where the price the prior all time high meets the fair valuation line, you can see that every single time the price has been under it, okay? So here, the price was under it and we did not pass the fair valuation until about three months later or so. During the second cycle, we kind of came up to it, but ultimately the can was kicked down the road and it took another, you know, after, after getting from the, the, from the prior all-time high to get to the fair valuation to then when we finally passed it, you know, took maybe, you know, m more than half a year or so. And then again, where we currently are, if you take a line out from the last from the last market cycle peak and draw it all the way out to our fair evaluation, you can see that we would get there sometime in the middle of 2021. So if you extend these out to just say, well, this is where we actually cross the price. I'm just I'm extending these yellow lines out to show where we where the price crossed our previous all time high. You can see a nice pattern emerging. You know, the cycles are getting longer. We don't exactly know the relationship yet, um, mainly because we've only we only really have two previous cycles to look at. But we can see that a relationship is forming, and after this next cycle, we'll have a better idea of what that relationship is. If we were to continue on in this pattern, I've I've loosely drawn out, you know, what might happen. The price maybe or the the total cryptocurrency market cap could potentially cross, uh, you know, this prior all time high um, of 1 trillion or around 1 trillion, you know, thereabouts, I would say sometime first quarter of 2022, just maybe the, the last quarter of 2022. So sometime in that time frame of 2022, 
is when I when I could see us potentially crossing through it. And if not by 2022, then I think by 2023 for sure. And this is again why you know looking at a at a cycle peak in 2021 really doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it does not the data does not suggest that at all. Um, and even if you look at market cycle bottoms, that's the case. So. If you draw out some type of projection, which we're going to get into the math a little bit more in a minute, uh, you know, this is more or less what I would expect. And obviously, we could come back up into a more speculative bubble in the short term and come back down, just like we did in 2019. We could also come back down to our, our lower, kind of our bottom of our fair valuation or our undervaluation and test that for a while. We don't know. But ultimately speaking, you know, this is our, is our long accumulation phase, 2019, 2020, and part of 2021. Now, before we continue and, and, and talk more about, about the math in a minute, I want to I wanna give a shout out. So if you, I don't know if you guys follow um, uh, Steve from Crypto Crew University, but he gave me a shout out the other day. He said, you know, he was listing uh, three crypto YouTubers that he wanted to kind of give a shout out to that, uh, that he enjoys watching. Um, and I really appreciated that. And so either you guys know a little bit of history of this channel. One of the reasons I started this channel, I would say actually one of the main reasons I started this channel was because I used to watch Steve back when I was in graduate school. And, you know, that kind of seeing kind of how he, you know, made him, you know, he built everything from the ground up. He was, you know, he the success came, you know, from nothing and he, and he built it up. This encouraged me to start my own channel. So I actually haven't told anyone that yet. Uh, the only person I have told is, is Steve. I, I sent him an email. Uh, just to kind of thank him and let him know that, you know, this was, um, it really was, uh, he really was influential in me starting my channel because I, you know, I saw what I could, I could make it into. And also, you know, looking at, at how, how you can, you know, grow a channel um, in, in, in the right way. Uh, and one of the things he, he, he talked about is, is, is mentioning three people that are, you know, really that you find influential that, that have, you know, positively impacted you, you like their, you like their YouTube channel. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to continue this, the spread of the positivity that he started. Um, and so the first person, obviously, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a, the cheap way out and, and mention him. Um, but obviously he would be there. Uh, I would say another guy uh, is, are the, it's actually two people. It's, it's the brothers uh, who run the altcoin daily channel. You know, they they gave me a shout out, uh, you know, a, a few months ago, and um, in that video, I mean, it really helped grow my channel because you know they just they decided to to, to let other people know what I was doing, so that meant a lot. Um, so definitely, you know, definitely check out um, Steve at Crypto Crew University. Check out um, uh, Altcoin Daily. Uh, I'll link all these in the description below, by the way. And then another guy uh, that was, you know, he probably he probably isn't as, as aware of how how um, helpful he was, but uh, Crypto Crow, he he reached out to me when I had maybe I don't know like one or two thousand subscribers. I, I really didn't have many subscribers, um, and he and I think he could tell that like I was probably going to have a lot of the same issues that he probably had when he first started his channel. So he just kind of you know he invited me into you know onto a Telegram chat and. We just kind of discussed uh, what was going on, and, and he gave me a lot of helpful pointers. So, I would say, you know, I would say definitely um, uh, Steve from Crypto Crew University, Altcoin Daily. They really do a good job, I think, of covering the news, which I really don't do. Um, Crypto Crow, you know, he really did help me out. And I think a lot of people think that we're kind of all against each other and we're all out to get each other, but that's really not the case. I mean, we all want, you know, we all want each other to succeed. Um, and then the last person, actually, it's not actually a, a crypto channel. Uh, and the reason I'm going to mention this guy is because I, I, I'm going to kind of use Steve as my, as my third mention. Uh, but the fourth mention is, is a guy who, um, you know, he really started following me early on. And he's, he's been really helpful in terms of, in terms of growing, growing my channel and, and just thinking about uh, brainstorming different ideas. Um, his name's Alex. He, he just started a YouTube channel. Uh, maybe like two or three days ago, I think I think he has four subscribers. Um, but this guy, he got he knows his stuff. Uh, you know, if you if you want if you want advice, you know, if you're looking if you're if you're looking to say start your own entrepreneurial journey, um, uh, he's got a lot of experience in, in Silicon Valley and, and and startups there. So check him out. I'll link all these guys in the description below so you guys can see it um, and 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 
yeah, go check them out. Uh, subscribe to their channels if you know, and 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 see what kind of content they have to offer. They've all been influential in my life. Um, I would I would now like try to try to try to spread it to them. I would encourage them to you know to mention three people that uh, you know have have helped them and 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 they find um, you know they found a lot of value in. So let's continue on in in the video. So this is our is our fair valuation versus our trend line. And you might not you might not know what this is, but if you just take the, the percent difference between the price and the regression line, this is what you get. I've decided, by the way, that I'm going to do an update on this chart every month. So the beginning of the month, I'm going to do an update on this chart. Um, that way you guys can expect when it's coming, you know, if if if, if you're you don't really want to see the update because not a whole lot's changed and you can skip the video. But just know that my plan is to is to roughly do a video on this every month just so we can see where we are, just so we can see where we how we're undervalued, if we're overvalued, are we getting into our speculative bubble phase? Um, we're gonna be here for the journey. So this again just so shows the, the the percent difference between the price and the valuation line. Note that a hundred percent just corresponds to uh, a fair value. And the reason I did this was show that we could so that we could show the negative um, you know percent differences but on a logarithmic scale so you can see like 40 percent would mean we're um you know we're 60 percent undervalued if that, if that makes sense um and we've noted that these are you know this is our is our pretty typical uh this is the time to get in phase i mean this is not financial advice but just historically speaking when we're you know when we're negative 60 percent undervalued or when, you know when we're 40 percent um, from our regression line, historically, this is, is an amazing time to get into the market. Now, if you draw a trend line from, you know, from peak to peak, um, it just happens to correspond to the next peak too. And I really, you know, I'm not a huge fan of drawing trend lines, especially on, on, on some of the lower time frames. but I really do find it interesting when we literally just have three peaks. And if you just take the percent difference between those lines, according to the fair value regression equation, I mean, they line up very well. Um, so I think that's really interesting and also seeing how the bottoms tend to line up fairly well as well, except for in 2013, we were around 40% undervalued rather than making it all the way down to 60% undervalued. Um, and, and so what I want to do here is I want to, you know, this is the projection, okay? You know, this is our, our ultimate projection. We don't, in the, in the near term, uh, whether, you know, through, throughout the rest of the year, throughout probably a lot of 2021, we don't really expect there to be a huge move, but I, I would anticipate Bitcoin getting to its previous all time high and sustaining it um, within maybe, you know, 16 to 17 months or so. And, and we've talked about that in other videos on the, the, the primary regression band of Bitcoin. So I won't cover it here. You, I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if we were to project this out, obviously there's, there's a decent level of uncertainty there. And that's why I typically say, you know, I, I think that the most probable time to see another all time high and paradigm shift in the price of Bitcoin before it comes crashing down would be like 2023, maybe the second or third. I, I would say like August of 2023 or summer or fourth quarter of 2023, sometime in that fr time frame. Um, but, I, you know, I don't I mean, these peaks can can be subject to a lot of different things. I, I this is why I put a couple tolerances on there just saying, OK, well, Maybe it happens at the end of 2022. I, I really doubt it would happen that early. And maybe it even happens in 2024. And again, I know this rubs people the wrong way because we're really flirting with the next having. But the, the, the argument for this is that, you know, the theory I, I would put forth um, is that, um, or I guess my hypothesis, I would say, would be that we know that the macro volatility of Bitcoin is reducing. Annualized volatility is reducing. Uh, we know the market's becoming more efficient. If you look at the auto correlation, so the price of Bitcoin compared to a lagging version of itself, it's becoming less and less like auto correlated, which means the market is becoming more efficient. Um, we know that the market's becoming more efficient. We know that volatility is reducing. We expect lengthening cycles. We expect diminishing returns. That doesn't mean you can't still make a ton of money. It just means that you need to manage your expectations so that when the when the peak does come, you're not stuck thinking that Bitcoin's going to go up another 5x when really the data suggested all along that it wasn't. Um, and so if we continue this, if we if we look over again at this chart, you know, and we and we overlay it, you, you get an idea of, of how these things are going to overlap. So, you know, we, we kind of stay undervalued for a while. Again, you know, it's possible we see a, a smaller speculative bubble in the short term. Never discount that. I mean, there's always a chance we go to 20K this year and then come straight back down to 10K. 
Um, and these, when these things happen, I mean, you can take advantage of these moves. Uh, these, these are really important, I think, to, to take advantage of if you can. Um, and if you, if you just kind of draw the, you know, the frequencies here, or the, it, it looks like a frequency, I mean, I'm just drawing from bottom to top, you can see that our, you know, the, the frequency here is, is certainly expanding and, um, uh, you know, we're, we're coming closer into, you know, we're, we're, we're coming closer, we're honing in on, on just getting closer to our fair evaluation line. Um, which I think eventually we will hone in on and we're going to, you know, we won't see these 500% moves and, um, you know, over the course of a few months, like this will become something of times past. I, I still think we have, you know, at least a couple more market cycles to go before things really start to level out a bit more. Um, but remember, the market is becoming more efficient and we recognize this and it doesn't mean that you need to be sad about it. Knowledge is, is, is really useful in, in markets. It just means that you use that knowledge to your advantage. Now, I think this is really interesting um, because if you, if you go back and look at the regression line, I've loosely drawn it to be around 10 trillion. Um, and, I've, and I've often said, you know, I, it could be 8 trillion, it could be 12 trillion, what's a couple trillion among friends? I mean, it's not a huge, it's not going to be a huge difference at the end of the day. Um, of course, granted, another 2 trillion in market cap can make another, you know, 20,000 people millionaires or something. But at the end of the day, what's a few trillion among friends? This is our, in our general uh, thinking here is that we don't exactly know where it's going to occur, but we expect it to be somewhere in this region. Um, and if this does occur, you know, where am I getting this? Well, if you look, if you just plot out these, you know, peak to peak to peak, and if the next peak is say in this in this area over here, you can see that it would probably occur around 500 to 600 percent, which means that Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market would be overvalued by around 500 percent in that year from the regression line. So that means if the fair valuation of the entire cryptocurrency market cap, if you draw it out to say 2023, you can see the fair valuation. Note this is a logarithmic scale would be somewhere between one and two trillion, okay? So where does a 500% overvaluation put us? Well, it puts us right around 10 trillion. And I think, you know, the beauty, the, the beauty of, of seeing the mathematics just kind of line up like this uh, so methodically and, and to say, you know what, we recognize that we all wanted Bitcoin to go to, to 100K in 2021, but it's, it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, I'm bringing this message to you so that you can use it uh, to inform your own decisions. I, I obviously there's a small chance, but I, I highly doubt something like that would happen. And at the end of the day, when you're when you're comparing, say, this regression line here, or this uh, you know the, this trend line here, and noting that the next peak would correspond to around a 500% overvaluation, okay, and then look at your regression line the fair value regression line and see that in 2023, a 500% fair value overvaluation from that primary regression line would put us right back over that dashed green line, even though we know that macro level volatility is decreasing. So we know that we're going to get closer and closer to the green line every market cycle. So this one will probably only slightly go above it. Um, and I think that's, you know, you can, you can project this out, project that out by noting that we probably, you know, we're probably there's a good chance we're going to be capped at around a four to five hundred percent overvaluation in the year, maybe 2023 or 2024. And I think, you know, I think there's some beauty in the mathematics behind that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Check out the Telegram channel if you if you want to discuss the charts. We also have the premium list here at IntoTheCryptoVerse.com if you want access to exclusive content. Um, uh, but that'll wrap it up for this video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.